right, folks, we are back here on WLTH 1370 AM. I hope you all didn't uh, lose a few years off your life during that commercial break. <laughs> oh, I'm not so bad. What? Yeah, I think that was probably the longest commercial break. <laughs> that reminds me of at the beginning of the pandemic when uh, we first started this show back when I did it with LaVita and Kathy Kelly mm -hmm. and um, Johnny Rucker. And, uh, you know, I was the only person in the studio because I was running the boards, but uh, they were all at home because this was the, at the very start of the pandemic. Oh, wow. Okay. We were all social distancing back when that first became a thing. And I used to have to play the mayor's address to the city every show. So uh, it would be about 13 or 14 minutes of just the, of Mayor Prince talking about, you know, COVID-19. <laughs> and like, the, like, so the, those, those uh, commercial breaks would end up being 15, 17 minutes. And you go, oh, my God. Mm hmm uh, but anyway, Rev, a story we were supposed to get to last week did not get a chance to get to. Right. It, it's kind of an, a big deal, and I, I'm sort of uh, amazed that uh, more people in the, the media are not paying attention to this. But when I look at who their sponsors are, it kind of makes sense. A new study has said, Rev, that lead gasoline has blunt, blunted uh, the IQ of about half of the United right. States population. That's insane. <laughs> so now for some context, lead gas was banned in 1996, but exposure to the poison cost people born before then, which is both of us, several IQ points on average, researchers have estimated. So exposure to leaded gasoline lowered the IQ of about half of the population of the United States. A new study estimates the peer-reviewed study published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences focuses on people born before 1996, the year that the U.S. banned gas containing lead. Overall, the researchers from Florida State and Duke found that childhood lead exposure cost America an estimated 824 million IQ points, or about 2.6 points per person on average. Certain cohorts were more affected than others. For people born in the 1960s and 1970s, all my, um, I guess that'd be Gen X. I guess that'd be Gen X. Baby boomers, too. Yeah, some baby boomers, yeah. Gen Xers, born in the 60s and 70s, when leaded gas consumption was skyrocketing. Right. The IQ loss was estimated to be up to six points, and for some more than Wait seven points. You mean I could have been Albert Einstein? You could, you could have been Einstein, Rev. I could have been a contender. You could have been a contender. Oh. Yes, exposure to it came primarily from inhaling auto exhaust. So in places like in, in, in cities, in inner cities. The team behind the study used gas consumption data, population estimates, and other data to calculate that as of 2015, more than 170 million Americans, 170 million Americans had blood lead levels above five micrograms per deciliter in their early childhood lead. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, childhood years. Lead is a neurotoxin. No amount of it is safe, but currently 3.5 micrograms per deciliter is the reference value for blood lead levels to be considered high. The acceptable amount was once higher. Uh, now, the study author, Michael McFarland, an associate professor at Florida State, uh, said that he called the number of people affected by the lead exposure staggering. Well, no kidding. Well, no kidding, Michael. <laughs> uh, that's like all of us. In many cases, McFarland said a two to three point IQ difference is nominal unless the individual is on the lower side of IQ distribution. But on a population basis, shifting the average IQ down even a small amount could have large uh, consequences, uh, said uh, uh, Sung Kyung Park, an associate professor of epidemiology and environmental health sciences at the University of Michigan School of Public Health. The entire bell curve shifts, he explained, with more of the population at what once was the extreme low end of IQ test scores. Uh, now, lead used to be added to gasoline to help engines run more smoothly right. until other safer additives replaced it. In addition to being linked to lower IQs, it has been associated with heart and kidney disease. 
Now listen to this because we're uh-huh. in this, we're in what was the blackest city in America for many many years. Okay, um, black children are exposed more than white children. Monday study two estimated that most black adults under the age of forty five, which is me, unfortunately, uh, consider experience considerably higher levels of blood lead levels in early life than their are, are white counterparts. Hmm. The racial disparities are generally due to environmental contamination and infrastructure issues that affect drinking water in low income and minority neighborhoods like ours with the water crisis in Flint, Michigan being one of the more egregious example and reaches examples in recent years. And while children are most vulnerable to getting ill from lead, the toxins damage can show up years later. Lead mm. exposure is believed to put people at risk for chronic and age-related diseases, including cardiovascular disease and dementia. Rev, mm. like my God, like uh, th- like uh, this should be everywhere. Like this should be the biggest story in every news. I mean, I, God bless the Ukrainians. I, I don't want nobody to get bombed wherever you are. But we're talking about millions of Americans, especially people in places like Gary and East Chicago and Hammond, this region, the most toxic state in the union. Okay. Like I, I'm, I was shocked reading this, Ralph. What was your reaction when you first read it? <laughs> um, well, my first thought was, cause I saw the articles that said it averaged like 2.6 points per person. per person. Right. I was like, Oh, well, shoot, that's st- statistically irrelevant. I wouldn't even notice the difference. Um, so there's that. On the other hand, what you read tonight, saying that for folks in the inner city it was more like six or seven points, that would make, that would, well, let's just say that would make me a lot smarter than I am. <laughs> Right, and, and you know, uh, it's crazy. We talk about this quite a bit here because we talk about crime and punishment here. But the 1960s and 1970s saw a historic increase in crime, okay? Uh, a, and crime levels reached by the early 90s, a level that still, even with the crime increase of the last few years, we have not gone back to, 60, uh, to 70s, 80s, and 90s level of crime. Mm-hmm. Like crime is lower today, even with the two years that we've had this pandemic than it was in, say, the mid the, the early 90s, the mid 90s, the 80s, etc. And one of the the hypothesis of people like the Freakonomics uh, guys and others was that banning lead gasoline was one of the things that I'm sorry, that lead gasoline was one of the reasons that caused such a horrific crime increased during the 1960s and 70s in this country, particularly in the inner cities of America. Oh, you know what? I was going to ask you a question, but then I realized something. Right. It wasn't until the late 50s, early 60s, that we had this proliferation of automobiles. Oh, okay. Because remember, during World War II, there wasn't many automobiles on the road then. It was after World War II that they started building all those highways. Right. And people started really traveling. Right. Man. That, that's insane. And when we think about, like I said, the, the crime, the, in places like Gary, we think about places like Gary, Detroit, Chicago, Flint, Michigan. Think about how many people, if that is indeed true, if that hypothesis is true, that lead gasoline was a big part of why crime was so high during the 80s and 90s, how many black lives were destroyed in our communities, you know, we ended up being uh, earning that unfortunate title, the murder capital of America. But you know, I'm sitting right here on Fifth Avenue. I'm looking out at the street. I'm, I'm I see I'm passing semi trucks. I mean, I mean, I sort of say semi trucks are passing me by, and cars are passing me by. Uh, and so they're, they're still putting smoke pollution into the air, but it may not be the leaded gasoline. But I right. can only imagine. For how many years people in this city were breathing in lead gasoline that was not only possibly causing them dementia, heart disease, kidney disease, but also was helping to essentially uh, ruin the emotional development of whole generations of children. 
That's insane. Uh, we have a caller. Mm. Hello, caller. Hey, good afternoon, gentlemen. Hello. Hey. Let me weigh in on this man stuff. <laughs> yes, yes. Come on, brother. Okay, now, what was the uh, percentage of automobile owners, you know, between the races during that time also, number one, and I you know growing up, man, you know, saying went to a gas station, you know, as kids, we always stuck their hands out the window to smell the lead of gas. So that wasn't helping either. Uh, it so, probably uh, was not. Uh, no, no, we we done it. The kids, you know, white and black, whoever, you know, we always stuck their hands out the window to smell the gas because so it smelled good. Right. You know, and we done it at, you know, when the lead of gas was out there. And um, I would like to know what that percentage of car owners were you know, between the races during that, you know, peak time that they were saying that this was going on, you know. Because a lot of us didn't have cars back then. Right. right. But in the cities, people were, there was still a lot of traffic. Like, you know, like I said, even if, say, you didn't have a car, there was still semi-trucks passing through this place constantly and still people driving through here constantly. Right, because you had, like, 30,000 people working in the meal, right? Right. I, I get that, right? Good enough. But I'm saying is, you know, I mean, it was that. I mean, I, I, I'm not doubting none of this study, man. I believe all this kind of stuff that, you, that you've been talking about. So especially with the leg, because there was some uh, apartments that people had. They uh, grew up in, you know, uh, lead paint. You know, laying in yep. the paint, you know, eating paint, all that kind of stuff. So, so you're right about that, man. I'm not arguing the point. I just wanted to know what the you know, what kind of percentage is. Uh, is there any type of breakdown on car ownership during that time? Uh, yeah, people that's... People live, uh, you know, around uh, uh, painted, uh, lead painted houses and all that kind of stuff. You know, I'd like to see a breakdown on all that, too. Yeah. But I know it's, it's still going to hit us hard, as, you know, anybody else anyway, you know. Mm -hmm. I, that's but, actually a good question because, uh, you know, I, I haven't grown... Since the world I've lived in since the 1980s and 1990s, okay, virtually everybody's had a car. Right. So I, I don't I don't know a world in which most people didn't have a car, or which where there weren't constantly cars on the road. But I can imagine for people who grew up before that how novel it was for people to own their own car, especially right. black people. Exactly. Yeah, I was born in Detroit. You know, about three in here. You know, so I, I, you know both. Two different cities, you know, to compare with, you know, you know, I was a baby when they brought me from Detroit, though, you know. But, but, but my parents, my mom was born in Gary, you know, raised with Roosevelt, all that kind of stuff. But uh, my father was from, you know, from Detroit, you know. So but anyway, what I'm saying is, you know, I, I agree with what you're saying. You know, and then I like to see, you know, full study or a complete study you know, on all of it. You know, break it down, down, you know, see what, what the yeah. thing is. Words being uh, harmed, you know, not just by the water. I mean, now, Gary was always supposed to have the best water in the country. That's what I was always told growing up. Yeah, that's what I always heard, too. Well, that's when it was privately owned. You know, when uh, when Leo Lewis was the president of Gary Hoover Water at the time, the city of Gary, the Georgia Chairs of Mayor, Sam, they went on Marty Frey's show. I listened before you guys Sam was on Channel 9. They had a discussion about the city of Gary taking over the water company here. Mm. And they put it on a referendum. And the people in Gary voted against the city taking over the water company here, which was a good thing. Because Leo Lewis ran in that company, you know, you know, uh, at the time, you know, and he made sure that the water was safe here. That's all he talked about, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I, I remember watching that show, you know, when they was on TV together, you know. And I'm glad the city didn't take it over. That's all well, I can say. <laughs> well, thank you for your call, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. It's all good. I, I was just sitting here uh, Googling, doing the Googles. And I saw that just last year, U.S. Steel was fined $1.2 million for, for polluting Lake Michigan um, <laughs> with uh, lead. Uh, I'm seeing more from the Chicago Tribune that uh, Indiana Steel Mills emit 18,000 pounds of lead a year. Mm. Yes. Uh, so, um, and uh, representatives... Uh, Residents express outrage at Republic Steel over lead. And so, you know, we're like, we're still awash in lead and, and other sort of contaminants. And like I said, if, if the hypothesis is right about there being a connection between crime and lead exposure, how much of the historic crime rates that we've seen in our communities can be attributed to lead poisoning. I think about all these years we've been beating ourselves up about, oh my God, people are listening to gangster rap music. Oh my God, people, you know, it's because black fathers are, are terrible or black mothers are terrible or black schools are terrible. Who's to say that 
generational exposure to all these chemicals isn't behind a lot of the sort of the the horrific crime and violence that we've seen in the, in this community and, and others you know and, and that's why it's important for us to do our homework i remember uh the organization i work with the united urban network actually has uh we've we've worked with a lot of different environmental groups over the years and i remember hearing about from from one of the uh events i actually was not able to go but after hearing about the event uh, here in the, in the city of Gary and hearing about some of the testimonies of people who live here, some of the, the trials and tribulations they've gone through because of the environmental pollution that we have in the city, where I heard a, a one story about a two or three year old girl coming down with uterine cancer in this wow. city. Like, that's not like that's. Definitely not the norm. That is definitely not the norm, Rev. I, I agree with you there. Um, wow, it's 722. We got to go to a break, folks. Please give us a call, 219-885-1371. Uh, that number again, 219-885-1371. We'll be right back after this talk about inflation.